Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, yes, you can call it a webinar, we don't mind. <laughs> um, but we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians, both in Nebraska and across um, the country. Uh, we do a variety of topics here, um, presentations, book reviews, interviews, little mini training sessions. Basically, if it's vaguely related to libraries, we'll put it on the show. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but they are all recorded. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can just go to our website and uh, watch all of our archived recordings that we have there. Um, we do a mixture of things here. We have commission staff, that Nebraska Library Commission staff, that sometimes do presentations, and we have um, guest speakers that come in. And today we have a mixture of that. <laughs> um, this morning we are talking about um, celebrating see. Yeah. There we go. Let's see if I can... El Dia de los Niños, El Dia de los Libros. Very um, cool. yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't even practice. Um, <laughs> maybe I should have. Um, and we've got a group of people from the Nebraska Library Association Diversity Committee that are going to tell us about what this, is, what this event is and how you can do some things in your library for it. Um, next to me, I have Catherine Brockmeyer, who is actually commission staff, but she is also the um, chair of NLA's diversity committee at the moment. Um, next to her is Sally Snyder, who is the children's and young adult librarian here, coordinator, what is the coordinator? Yeah, <laughs> here at the Nebraska Library Commission. She's going to share some ideas. And then on the line with us, who will be speaking later on, as two other staff, two other members of the NLA diversity committee, Naomi Solomon and Willa um, Gary. 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 So um, we're starting off with Catherine, so I will just hand over to you and you can take it away with your PowerPoint. You should be all Great. set to go. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Catherine Brockmeyer. I do work at the Nebraska Library Commission, but I have a very soft spot in my heart of uh, diversity outreach for to people of diverse backgrounds has uh, is close to my heart. And I have continued that from my previous service in a public library. And so I have joined the Nebraska, Nebraska Library Association's Diversity Committee, and we are kick-starting this year with a, the observance and the promotion of El Dia de los Niños, El Dia de los Libros, which means Children's Day slash Book Day. Just a little background on pronunciation and writing this out. You will see an accent over the eyes, so that the, instead of dia, it is dia, and then there's this funny little thing over the N, and that is called a tilde, and that makes it the letter N Y instead of N A. So niños and día. So uh, el día de los niños, el día de los libros. So we will get started here. The first thing I would like to do is ask you to type in your question in your question box whether or not you have celebrated el día de los niños, el día de los libros before. You can just type in there, yes, no, we're planning one. Exactly. <laughs> and actually, you can see it up there, or you can look here, this would be easier if you look oh, next to you. Okay, because it's a little closer. We got one no, no. We have one no. Another no. How does this expand? Um, I can have it. Box out. out. There it is. So we have some some new people here that that uh, they say they haven't done an a, a, dia de, a dia before. So wonderful. We'll have some great inspiration for you today, and perhaps if you have or if you're already aware of it, we hope to expand your knowledge. So this no, is wonderful. I'm very interested in doing it. That's why. Right. Very interested in doing mm -hmm. one, and it is quite possible. This is the 27th of March. Uh, it, it's quite possible to go ahead and get this prepared to at least have an awareness campaign, even if you don't have any programming. Um, you can do this on a shoestring, and you'll you will have everything prepared, and you'll be ready for April 30th or the week surrounding April 30th. However, you want to do it. But let's go for let's shoot for April 30th. So celebremos, celebrate. <laughs> Dia is a nationwide celebration of children, families, and reading held annually on April 30th. Dia brings families together 
and emphasizes the importance of literacy for every child, regardless of linguistic or cultural background. And so even though we're talking about the title being in Spanish, it has expanded to all cultures and all backgrounds and all nationalities. Hundreds of libraries, schools, and communities throughout the country will host celebrations and programs that honor multiculturalism and stress the importance of books and literacy. DIA is an enhancement of Children's Day, which began in 1925. Children's Day was designated as a day to bring attention to the importance and well-being of children. International Children's Day was declared at the World Conference for the Well-Being of Children in Geneva, Switzerland in 1925. And I was searching for pictures of uh, children from that era and came across uh, this wonderful photo from Wichita City Library's Children's Stacks. Um, they have a wonderful collection. I did contact them for permissions mm -hmm. in case there was a copyright mm -hmm. attached and they graciously uh, gave us permission to show this picture. So, Dia del Niño. What's Dia del Niño? That's the day of the child. That's Children's Day. And in Mexico, Children's Day is celebrated on April 30th, um, La 30, los 30 de Abril. Um, it's also known as El Dia del Niño. And on this day, teachers in school organize the day for their children. So it's all about the kids. Lessons are suspended from 12 noon, sometimes earlier. And they organize games, music, and the children bring in their favorite foods to share with each other. Some families also have a day out with their children, and there are special activities for the kids in parks and sports centers. Sometimes, also, the children will be given presents by their families, and this is the day when children are really honored in Mexico. This is a photograph from a Dia del Niño, so this was not a Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros uh, celebration. This was actually Dia del Niño. Here's Pat Mora. She is the best advocate and the originator of this entire movement of Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros. In 1996, mm -hmm. author Pat Mora learned about the Mexican tradition of celebrating April 30th as El Dia del, del Niño, the Day of the Child. And Pat thought to herself, well, we have Mother's Day and Father's Day. So yes, we need Kids' Day too. But I want to connect all children with book joy, the pleasure of reading. And I think she's kind of coined that word book joy. I have seen her use that on her website. I've heard her speak about it. And she's just a wonderful advocate. As a side note, I don't know, it might be last minute, but I did coordinate a Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros, and we had contacted her or her agent, and she wrote a tiny, she wrote a lovely little note, which I read aloud uh, to the kids at our celebration. So it's possible to contact her. She's so passionate about this. Dia is sponsored by the Association for Library Service to Children, which is a division of the American Library Association. ALSC is the national center of DIA through grants from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Mm -hmm. And AS, ALSC is working with other national organizations such as Reforma, which is the national association to promote library and information services to Latinos and the Spanish speaking. To initiate communication and education efforts that promote DIA to families across the United States. So this new website that I will show you is funded entirely by the generous support of the Dollar General Literacy Foundation. And libraries across the nation were able to apply for grants from them to celebrate DIA. That grant cycle has closed and the libraries have been awarded. And it's interesting to see which libraries were awarded so that you can follow them and see what kind of celebrations they have done. DIA is a nationally recognized initiative that emphasizes the importance of literacy for all children from all backgrounds. And it's a daily commitment. This is where you try to extend it from the day to throughout the year. It's a daily commitment to linking children and their families to diverse books, languages, and cultures. So DIA could be the jumping off point. DIA could be the embar embarking on an entire year-round campaign. The common goals of all DIA programming are to one, celebrate children and connect them to the world of learning through books, stories, and libraries. Two, 
nurture cognitive and literacy development in ways that honor and embrace a child's home language and culture. Three, introduce families to community resources that provide opportunities for learning through multiple literacies. So for example, the program that I did when I was at the Hastings Public Library here in Nebraska, we did work with the Hastings Literacy Group and they had a, a and also the migrant education program and so I made some connections with them they had a booth he was on the committee to to organize LDEA and so we made a really great connection there they did a lot of promoting and I think we brought in an extra amount of participants and, and guests that day to our programming because of that connection fourth we recognize and respect culture heritage and language as powerful tools for strengthening families and the communities. Here's the website, uh, dia.ala.org, and we'll go to that in just a little bit. I will show that to you for just a couple of minutes, but I strongly encourage you to go over every tab, try every fly out, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, delve as deep as you can into the resources that are available to you. This is where you can submit the event that you're going to have, and then it will show up um, on their search. And this is also where you can order materials. I did not try to find out if it's too late or just in time to be able to order materials, but through them I think you can get bookmarks and, and other wonderful things that you might be able to hand out, at least at your desk on the 30th of April. So what can you get from the site? There is a publicity toolkit. They walk you through all the wonderful ways that you can promote DIA. There's the resource guide, another wonderful resource, and then also a book list and an addendum to the book list. And uh, if we have time at the end, perhaps Krista can go back and, and kind of walk through those, or Sally, if you feel comfortable, or Naomi or Willa might also be visiting these. But if that's possible, that would be wonderful. So you've gone to the website, you have gone through every tangential, <laughs> you've gone tangentially through every possible uh, iteration of this website, and uh, you've gained your inspiration, and you're, you're ready to go. So what's next? You can do an awareness campaign. You could do a special story hour or some kind of programming on that day. You could do outreach where you go out into the community, whether you're going to... Uh, minority groups or you're actually going and talking about the awareness to say a Lions Club or a Rotary group. Mm -hmm. You can do the advocacy where you advocate for your various uh, populations that come into your library. One of the most popular, there may not be time, but you might be able to go to a Lions Club and ask them to pony up $100 or something, is a book giveaway. And another one is library card sign up. And so the book giveaway was a huge we did our dia outside. We brought in a mariachi band. We had 900 people show up. We had free food. Uh, all the people through Migrant Education Program, a lot of the moms had uh, cooked, cooked and cooked and cooked. And we had just the most wonderful. Now, that was huge. But when they found out that we were bringing a mariachi band, our group went from about 100 to an estimated 900 to attend. <laughs> so you bring in a mariachi, you're good to go. <laughs> So uh, some other things that you might do is you might approach your mayor and ask for a declaration of making April 30th El Dia de los Niños, El Dia de los Libros. Our mayor did come to our celebration. He, he spoke for a couple of minutes. This is a great way for your different populations to get to know um, some ind individuals in the government. And you might write news articles or ask for the news to cover just even the awareness of Dia. Um, the publicity toolkit does give you a sample news release. You might do displays or book talks. You might have musical performances. Again, you might visit community groups or make pr presentations to Kiwanis. And you might, if you have time and you think you might have somebody in your back pocket that you could approach um, a funder for the book giveaways or um, uh, any kind of bookmarks or little, little gifts or prizes. Um, and also the Nebraska Library Co Co Commission here has a collection of books that you might um, and similars that you might be able to get through your state library. Um, these are the books to help in preparation for El Dia de los Niños. It gives you um, wonderful ideas for the books themselves, craft projects, 
um, how, how you might serve populations. Now this is all geared toward um, the Hispanic or Latino population, but of course there are other populations that you could uh, go to and uh, access resources such as this, just to give you a background of outreach and how outreach can be most effective in your library. And just so you know, this document and the PowerPoints and anything that everybody uses today will be posted when the recording goes up as well, so you'll be able to have access to this. Absolutely. And that concludes my presentation. I will pull up Sally's. And I just want to thank Sally Snyder for joining us today. And I do want to thank in advance Naomi Solomon as well as Willa Gray, who will be present presenting a little bit later. And if someone has time toward the end of the presentation to, uh, to visit the website. Otherwise, I think it all makes sense when you go to the website. Again, it's dia.ala.org. And thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll uh, make room here for Sally. Why don't yeah, you come yeah, to the yeah. middle so that you can drive your, your presentation. Just a little rearranging here. <laughs> and so you can hear me. <laughs> I hope I'm not stealing ideas from Naomi and everybody, but um, I gave a presentation a number of years ago about Think, craft things and, and beyond that you can do to um, bring, at that time, Hispanic or Latino people into the library. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking with Catherine about these, and she says, oh, just bring those to, to the session. So here I am with my ideas. Mm -hmm. And papel picado is the first thing I'll talk about. I'm a visual person, so I like to see the words. And I'm hoping that'll help you, of course, as uh, we said, the website that I have on here, you'll see later. That's just one of many different websites about Papel Picado. The fun thing about this is that um, people who have, I think kids still make snowflakes. Mm -hmm. So there's my kind of wrinkle example. I'm just going to wave it around down here. You take, traditionally, this is a Mexican, primarily a Mexican thing. They make these and hang them around the room for a celebration. Um, so you take a piece of tissue paper and fold the edge so that it, it will fit over the string that you use to hang it. And then you fold it up like, you, like you're making snowflakes. It just reminds me so much of making snowflakes. You fold it up and you make some cuts and then you, you open it up again and say, is this you know, all I want to do? Fold it up again or fold it the other way. You can fold it many different ways and make cuts and then they hang them all around the room. So this is a great way to have kids, teens, whoever, because they can be very intricate. Mm -hmm. the, they have artisans who make extremely intricate and beautiful papel picado, which means papel is paper and picado means punched or, or cut. And so you need bright colors. I know you can't see me very well. I have red and yellow and, and this um, aqua. If you don't want to use tissue paper, um, you can use construction paper if you have a big stack of construction paper. I know everybody has limited budget, so you can go ahead and do that. But if you want to be traditional, the tissue paper is the traditional route to go. And they cut it and hang it. And, um, and one of the items that I read about... Uh, Papel Picado today, people who are making very intricate ones are starting to use vinyl because these are hung outside and inside and outside these will, of the course, tissue will the dissolve tissue will dissolve and, yeah. and that's kind of part of the idea. The celebration is over, the tissue eventually goes away. But um, it's great fun. I think the kids will have a great time. And yes, you'll have a big mess because you'll have cut out little pieces of tissue everywhere, but at least it's not glitter, unless you really like glitter. Um, this is the website that I chose um, just yesterday. I've been to several. It says muertos on there, on that bottom line. That means death, because um, they also make these papel picado for the Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. So if you're one, if you speak a little Spanish and wondering why does it say muertos, that's why. Um, but this was a very interesting short section from the Museum of International Folk Art, so I think it's pretty... Um, a pretty well-known site, 
And you can, of course, find many, many other sites that do that. She mentioned one of the books on the list was 25 Latino Craft Projects. And I checked this out yesterday, too, just to see what all was in here. Interestingly, it does not have papel picado mm -hmm. in this book, but it has some other interesting crafts that you can do for kids or mm -hmm. teens or adults if you want to celebrate. So some of the other craft ideas. For the little kids, you can glue or tape crepe paper streamers onto the top of a straw hat to wave in celebration. It says in this book that crepe paper is really popular in Mexico mm -hmm. for, the, for this was part of the the chapter on Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros. Or you can have them cut out a smaller square or rectangle, it should be, of tissue paper or regular paper and do the same papel picado to that and then attach it to a straw and to make a flag that they can wave. So they can wave their streamers or they can wave a flag that they've cut um, in, this, in the fashion of papel picado. They also oh, wow. talked in the in the chapter on Dia de los Niños about paper beads, which we've seen other places where you take triangles of paper and you can cut out up, cut up magazines, mm -hmm. old magazines, of course, <laughs> that are available, and that has lots of different colors. And you put a, a, a line of um, glue along the center, from the center to the tip, and then you roll those, and they say a coffee stir stick. Roll them up on the coffee stir stick, mm -hmm. then slip this it out of there and set it aside to dry. And after you've done that and they're all dried, you can string them using thread or craft string, whatever you have, for them to make a necklace or bracelet or whatever they want to do. And I've seen that done in from various countries. And um, according to this book, it's um, popular in Peru as well. Cool. So that's just a couple, three craft things you can do. Um, there's many other ideas in here that I didn't get to because I want it to be quick and brief, but take a look at this book if you're planning on, I know we only one person probably be able to check it out between now and the 30th, but from here, from but here, you can look for it elsewhere in your library loan, see if you can get a hold of it from someone besides the commission if you're not the first one to get it from us. <laughs> Very good point. And also you can start planning for next year. If you don't feel like you have enough time for this year, you can get this book later and plan some ideas for next year. I also, of course, want to promote children's picture books and, and beginning readers because my li the librarians in Nebraska are telling me that the, the dual language books are very popular mm. with both English, speak English only speakers and with multilingual people because you can read it just in English, you can read it in, in just in Spanish, or if your child speaks Spanish and is learning English, they can do both and, and really get a sense of both languages. It's important for um, people who have uh, have another language as their first language to learn to read in that language before they really try to learn to read in, in English. I understand from what um, educators have said that um, they really need to learn their language and then they can learn English. Mm -hmm. So you're making all of this available to them. So that was my little aside um, promotion. Mm -hmm. And then of course you always want to have fun. So I'm hoping that you have as much fun as the kids, the teens, whoever, because the teens will make those those um, paper roll-up necklaces and bracelets while they might not, or they might make a really intricate papel picado because mm -hmm. they don't want to just look like they're little kids making snowflakes. See, because mine are, that's all the exciting I can get with mine. I know sometimes I see people do them where it's not just a snowflake, but they cut it into actual pictures or people yes. or something in yes. there. I just, just, I have no talent. No They're just gorgeous, some of them. Yeah. As you look along around the internet and look under Papel Picado, as I said in my introduction, so you spell it right, <laughs> there are some beautiful things that have been done by truly talented artists. Mm -hmm. And mine look like snowflakes because that's what I had in my mind <laughs> when I started cutting. <laughs> and that's all I had to talk about. I just wanted okay. to give a quick little um, craft and, and some ideas about Dia. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, thank great. you for having Thanks, me here, yeah, and I'll yeah. listen now to some more people great. talk about other ideas. Okay, yeah, you can just stay there. Okay. All right, and, and next up, I believe we have Naomi. Uh, Naomi, I've unmuted you. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm going to hand over presenter control to you. 
So you should be able to share your screen in just a second here. You should be getting a pop-up to share your screen. Is my screen up there now? Yep, I see it now. Yep. For those of the, okay, uh, thanks. Map there, yep. Okay, go right ahead. All right. For Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros, I thought it would be really fun to get piles and piles of books and try to find the best or the easiest ones to implement in a short amount of time. Um, so most of these are going to be for story time, but I also chose some upper elementary reads. And um, I was a little bit liberal with where I put them on the map. Sometimes it depends on where the author was from or where I believed that the culture in the book was from. So. Um, some leeway there, but then also um, most of all of these did come from the dia.ala.org book list that Catherine already mentioned, and I have a few links that I'll show at the end, and that will be probably attached with the information you get later. So books to try. Do I need to get rid of this? Okay, just a moment. I guess right away, jumping right into Pat Mora's book, Book Fiesta, because again, she is the founder of this holiday. And this is a bilingual picture book. It was illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Um, you might recognize his artwork. Um, it was used in Summer Reading Program 2011. And this is just a book where kids are reading in all kinds of fun and wacky places. They're reading inside of a whale in a hot air balloon um, and all kinds of things like that. So. Um, I think this would be fun to get kiddos to imagine some unusual place that they'd like to read and draw and color a picture of that, or even to grab a favorite picture book off the shelf and, and do a quick parade around the library, just um, sharing that book joy with other people who happen to be around that day. Um, the next book I'd like to discuss is Rachel Isadora's Say Hello, and this author is from New York City, but also um, the story, I believe, would easily fit in New York City where there's a young girl taking her dog on a walk and for each neighbor or business owner she meets she already knows how to say hello in their language maybe she's been learning or they've been teaching her and so um, it's just a really easy way to teach kiddos to say hello in all kinds of new languages um, and some discussion questions that you could add to this uh, what other phrases besides hello would you like to learn in other languages or thinking generations back where have your families come from and how would they have said hello in their countries. Um, now, over in Massachusetts, we have the author Susan Pearson, who wrote How to Teach a Slug to Read. Um, this would be great for a story time for older siblings, not even very old, but just if they have um, a younger brother or sister that they'd like to teach how to read. It's about a young boy who teaches a mama slug how to teach her little slug how to read. And it's got some great tips in there, such as, um, put labels on things, choose really good books that rhyme or that have repeating words, help sound out words, make vocabulary lists, and be patient. And I think a lot of those things you could do in a story time. You could start putting labels on items around the room, including the librarian, the mother or the father, chairs, pencils, library cards, anything. Uh, make a vocabulary list and, and ask the children, you know, um, if you've got a younger brother or sister at home that's just learning to talk, or just learning to read, what words are, do you think are most important for, for your little one? Um, and a quote from this book, books will teach him how to play soccer, books will show him slugs in other lands, and it makes me want to ask, what else will books be good for? Next, down in Columbia, Monica Brown wrote Waiting for the Biblioboro, which is based on a librarian in the mountains of Columbia, and it's about a young girl named Anna who um, daydreams a lot and she really loves the stories so on the day when she meets the biblioboro for the first time it just changes her world immensely and it helps her to have um, a bigger imagination now that she can have a book that she can keep for a few weeks and it takes a really long time for the biblioboro to come back um, she feels so um, the librarian tells her well you know you don't have to wait for me you can write your own story and what I would do with the children for a story time with this book is ask them, do you think that Anna ends up writing her own story? Um, you could also ask about what other types of animals would be good for this kind of job. Um, do we have anything like the Biblioboro in the United States? Um, and if, if you were this librarian, what books would you make sure to have with you? So what are their favorite books or um, what books would be very important to take around to as many kiddos as possible? 
Then over in Minnesota, um, the author Laura Purdy Salas wrote Book Speak, which is poems about books, and this fits in great because April is National Poetry Month. Uh, many of the poems here focus, um, excuse me, act as riddles, so you can use them to have the students, the children, guess what part of the book is being described. It might be a book plate, a table of contents, or the book cover itself. And so um, sometimes uh, the books are very, the pieces of the books are very animated and um, they make for fun riddles. I would have children step in and read some of these pages, have adults step in and read, read them in alternating voices, or even copy them off and use them for poem in your pocket day. Then over in India, um, Sanjay Patel and Emily Haynes wrote Ganesha's Sweet Tooth, which is a new take on how um, the Mahabharata came to be, which is an ancient Sanskrit poem. So Ganesha is a Hindu god, so this is a fun introduction to Hindu mythology, but it's obviously um, very fictionalized. Um, I liked it a lot for the beautiful colors, you know, just the fact that it taught me a little bit about Hinduism, and it made me want to learn more. So um, some related activities. The Mahabharata that Ganesha helped to record was 200,000 lines long. It was an epic poem. And if I had piles of poetry books that I could take out to story time, I would have the children dig and try to find the longest poem that they could find in those books. Um, another thing, you could uh, find pictures of Ganesha from all kinds of sources and have them look for Ganesha's broken tusk in his hand in each picture. Or you can um, see if there's someone in your community who might make ladoos, which are the um, sweet Indian dessert that Ganesha really likes in this story. Then over in South America, um, we have this book, The Cazuela That the Farm Maiden Stirred, which is very much patterned off of The House That Jack Built. It's bilingual. On each page, um, one of the English words is replaced by a Spanish word, so you're learning a new Spanish word on each page. It's by Samantha, Samantha Vamos and illustrated by Rafael Lopez again. Um, and she's making rice pudding, but um, the farm animals help her get all of the ingredients that she needs. The setting could be um, any of a couple different places in South America, so I just plopped it in the middle there. And then there is a recipe included in the back, so that's pretty fun. Then the next book I read um, has a family from Australia and also from Morocco, and it's called Mirror by Jeannie Baker. This is a wordless book, but at the same time it's bilingual and bicultural. So it's great for any age because it's wordless. You can have readers side by side flipping open the pages and, and saying what they see. Oops, excuse me. Saying what they see on each page and um, trying to find the commonalities amongst the two families on such different parts of the world. You could use it alongside nonfiction books like Children Like Me. Um, you can, um, I would say a related activity would be to draw a storyboard of what goes on in the children's life and then turn it into a paper airplane, fly it across the room, and compare it to somebody else's storyboard of what goes on in their day-to-day. -day. Um, and you can also um, use it as inspiration to write parallel stories about other characters who at first don't seem like they match up, like a cat versus a dog, or a toy truck versus a real truck, or the life of a duck versus a chicken, things like that. Then over in Colombia again, we have the book Jimmy the Greatest. The authors are both from Colombia, Jairo Butrago and Rafael Yochting. Um, this is about a young boy who wants to be a boxer. He sees newspaper clippings of Muhammad Ali, and that really inspires him. But in his small coastal village, there's not much for him to do. And a really good quote I liked from this um, book, it says, But things change. Don Apolinar, like many people in town, had to go to the big city that far away place where there are boxing matches, gyms, and real jobs. Jimmy was glad for Don Apollinar, though it wasn't easy to say goodbye to his trainer, especially now that he realized how much he still had to learn, like how to not let time pass him by, how to maintain the gym, how to create a library. And so some discussion questions that would go with this, what would you do if you were Jimmy? Would you move to the city and why or why not? And then imagine who else is growing up in that town with big dreams and write a story about them. Um, then the next one, I started reading some um, upper elementary reads. So the next one is about pen pals, one whose family comes from the northern mountains of India, but she now lives over in New York City, 
and she does traditional handwritten letters with a young boy in Kentucky. It's called Same Son Here. It's by Silas House and Neela Vaswani. This is a very heartwarming epistolary novel, so it's all written in letters. It's um, two preteens. They're sharing secrets. They're becoming best friends, really. They're breaking down a lot of stereotypes about folks who live in the South, folks who are from India, all kinds of fun things like that. Um, so the related activities would be to obviously to find a pen pal or to learn about a new place and its people and focus on the similarities. Um, next, I read Inside Out and Back Again, which is about a young girl and her family from Vietnam who are escaping the war. And they um, get on a ship and travel to the United States where they, have, they find a host family in Alabama, especially after they put um, Christianity on their um, form. So that's pretty interesting. It touches upon topics like the difficulties of being an ELL student, being teased, being homesick. Um, being in a foreign place, obviously. This would be good for book club, and I think it would be, um, a related activity would be to write about, excuse me, write a poem about what you love about home or about someone that you miss. And then the next book you could say starts in Puerto Rico. This was one of my favorite reads, and it ends in New York City. The Revolution of Evelyn Serrano is written by Sonia Manzano, and she is actually Maria from Sesame Street, so you might already know of this, this woman. Um, this is historical fiction as well. It's based on actual events when the Young Lords took over a Puerto Rican barrio in New York, um, in Harlem, New York, from 1969 to 1970. It's also partially inspired by one of the New Yorican poets um, named Pedro Pietri. This touches upon issues such as mother-daughter relationships, community activism, national history, and tapar el cielo con la mano, which means to try to cover up the sky with your hand or to try to um, pretend like big problems aren't really there. And so um, the, the woman, excuse me, the young woman and her mother and her grandmother all struggle through uh, trying to come to terms with issues that are actually festering in their community and how to make them better. So I would give this to the budding activists. Probably it's more of a girl's read than a guy's read, but it was really one of my favorites. And then discussion questions. If you could bring some changes to your neighborhood, what would they be and where do you think you could start? And then finally, the one teen book that I read was Under the Mesquite by Guadalupe Garcia McCall. This one is also written in verse. Um, it was very easy read. The poetry seems really effortless by the author, so she did a great job. It's about a young lady, maybe 15 or 16. She's the oldest of eight siblings, and her hardworking immigrant parents are struggling because, you know, there wouldn't be enough money for so many kiddos. Um, and also the mother's going through cancer again. So the oldest daughter, who is the protagonist here, has to take care of her younger siblings. But she's missing out on a lot of childhood, and she's missing out on some critical mother-daughter experiences. Um, so a related activity for this one would be to write a poem about your relationship with a family member. And um, it's really heartbreaking, but I would suggest that if you've got some teen readers that are looking for something good this April, and those are all the books that I uh, hope you would try this Children's Day, Book Day. And um, like I said, I got all of them from the DIA book list, but uh, these other websites seemed very helpful to me as well. So I would check all of those resources um, if you're pointing something this month. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, That's Naomi. for me, ladies. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody has any questions or thoughts about anything, you can type them into the questions section. Um, I'm going to switch now over to Willa. Uh, Willa, you're unmuted. Can, are you still there? Okay. Yep, I'm here. Okay. May I ask Naomi, what um, was that Prezi that you that you your presentation was done in, or what was that? Yes, that's definitely Prezi. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that looked really nice. <laughs> Thanks. Um, All right, Willa, I'm handing over presenter control to you. So you should be getting the pop-up to share your screen. Quick programming ideas, and most of these also come from the website. Oops, there we go. Can you guys see my screen now? Yep, now we can, yep. Okay. Um, most of these come from that, that ALA website. That has already been mentioned. Um, oh, Willa, you can go. Willa, you can go ahead and make that full screen to actually show your presentation there, like to fill it up all the way if you want to. Okay, is that better? Yeah, just make it a little larger. 
Okay, and um, one idea that they have is the parade of books, um, and that involves making the crepe paper streamers, and they recommend just doing it with um, um, with wooden dowels and crepe paper, um, and then you just have the children um, hold the flags or a favorite book and kind of march around the library, um, and then you can come back and read some stories or do some finger plays. Um, so if you already have a, sto a story time um, scheduled that week, this can be kind of a, a way to um, celebrate DIA and just kind of incorporate it into the programming that you already have. Um, another idea is to have a craft program, and um, I'm glad that Sally didn't mention this already. Um, I found this nice um, tutorial on how to do Mexican paper flowers. Um, so that's what they look like when they're finished, and they're really quite beautiful, I think. I wouldn't mind having that on my desk. So um, you just need the tissue paper and the Chanel stems, the pipe cleaners, as I call them. Um, so you just cut the tissue paper if you have the big sheets, and then um, you fold them paper fan style. And those that you can see, they're kind of just like the paper fans that um, we probably all made in grade school when we we're supposed to be listening to the teacher. Um, and then you just take the Chanel stem, wrap it around, and you cut a petal shape at the ends. And then you just unfold the fan. And then you just kind of poof it up. You just take each layer and poof it up. And these, um, and you don't have to make them that complicated either. Um, I actually have done something similar with just like small little squares of tissue paper. And you just kind of puff up the tissue paper. So, you know, depending on the ability of your kids, you can make it as complicated or as easy as you want to. Um, and this is a good book to pair with that craft activity. Um, this is, again, on Pat Mora's website. Um, so I guess they, um, they make these uh, paper flowers and they put them around the statue of the Lady of Guadalupe. So probably any book about her would be appropriate. Um, a food program is always a fun idea. Um, Pat Mora recommended mimicking a popular TV food network show using cooks from the community. So, you know, if you have some um, parents who wouldn't mind volunteering or a community center or, you know, some place that does cooking classes and they wouldn't mind volunteering. Um, and I recommended uh, the cazuela that the farm made in Sturge for that because um, it does have the recipe in the end. And, and you know, it would be definitely be something that you would have to make in front of the kids um, because it involves a lot of um, stirring over the heat. Um, or, you know, if you could have a mom just make it in advance and then they could um, try it after reading the book, that might be fun. And this is a really good rice pudding. If you haven't had Mexican rice pudding, you should go to your nearest uh, Mexican grocery store and buy some because it's not like, you know, when you put the leftover rice in with the milk and cinnamon and sugar, this is like really rich and creamy. It's delicious. So, and that is a really fun book to read aloud, too. It repeats back. So um, this is the, um, the pot that the farm maiden stirred, and this is the cow that made the butter that went into the pot that the farm maiden stirred, and it's beautiful illustration. It's a really fun read aloud book. Um, and another idea is a dance or music program. Um, and I would recommend Jose Luis Orozco, um, if you um, if you just need some quick ideas, um, he um, 
I, well, I have one of his books at home that just has the lyrics and the music. Um, and there's also, you know, CDs. I know when I worked at Lincoln City Libraries, they had a bunch of his CDs and stuff, and they're all old or folk songs, so they can give you some ideas of songs to sing. Um, and the last idea, this is the only one that would actually require some advanced planning, um, but you might consider, um, you know, doing a big event with a storyteller, and that might be something you'll have to wait till next year to do, but um, I know the Humanities Council does actually have grants for um, speakers, and Erica Hamilton is the one that um, trains these speakers. Um, that's what Vicki Wood told me. She's the one that does the primetime programming at Lincoln City Libraries, where she brings in the um, Spanish-speaking families, um, and she has uh, the storytellers um, read a book or tell a story in Spanish, and then there's a translator that translate it, translates it into English. Um, so she, that's who she works with if you wanted to plan something like that for next year. Um, and then, and that's really all I have, but I do recommend looking at those two websites, the ALA website, and then um, also Pat Mora's website. Um, and that um, Mexican paper flower tutorial, I can um, probably send that out with, if we're sending out any information after we're done here. So that's all I have. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Willa. That was some very cool stuff. Yeah, we were getting very excited about those flowers, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's was fancy cutting on that one. Yes, very fancy on that nice example there. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any questions, uh, comments, thoughts for uh, Willa or Naomi or Sally? Um, Catherine did have to leave early today, so she is not here anymore. She took off while we were switching around. So does anybody have anything, any questions? If anybody you can type it into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. While we're waiting, I'd just like to say I can't wait to go to that website and check out that book list because the ones that, um, Naomi, was it Naomi that talked about the books? Yes. Mm -hmm. I loved your map and the, all the books sound great. I've read a couple of them, but I have to get busy and read some more. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Naomi and Willa, you're sure, both you're welcome. welcome. Go ahead. Oh, nothing. I was just saying you're welcome. No, that was really fun um, to read so many books. I truly have like 50 or 60 of them checked out. So <laughs> there's a lot there, but I tried to pare it down for people who are brand new at putting on um, Dia de los Niños programming. And I'm brand new at it as well. So um, I'm just tr going to try to work with the teens at my library and um, put on a, a book club, something special for book club. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of great story time ideas in, in that list. Yeah. And there, um, Willow there is showing us the page there on Pat Moore's page of all those different children's books that are listed there. Oh, I, I didn't like know they've got the mark here with bilingual ones for doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has a, and she has um, a whole, like, curriculums that go with the books, too. Um, and, and some of it is, is really geared more towards um, school libraries, I think, but you could probably you know, do a shorter version of, of what she describes. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it doesn't look like any urgent questions are coming in. Just a couple of love the presentations and good job from the audience. <laughs> so I'm going to um, pull back presenter control here now to our screen. And this is just, this is the um, ALA website that was mentioned earlier, uh, dia.ala.org, where you can get lots of information about it. And then, of course, the Pat Mora um, website that was being shown earlier as well um, will get you a, patmora.com will get you lots of resources as well. So you can see here there's the resources section, um, all these different tabs are the ones that uh, Catherine was talking about to take a look at. 
um, different things you do for celebrations, um, specific resources for parents or anyone who's supporting the program, um, resources that you can use to uh, create a program at your library. And they do have a section here I see here for registering, so they want to keep track and you'll let them know if you're doing something so you can see what's going on around the country um, for with these different programs. And then next year you'll have even more oh, even more ideas about what you can do for your DIA. Because mm -hmm. I'm all about borrowing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Um, any last words, Naomi or Willa? No, thank you for the time. Yep, thank you. Well, thank you. All right. Okay, well, thank you everyone for attending this morning. Got a lot of good ideas and resources here, a lot of things to think about. Um, there is still, I think, lots of time to um, definitely to put something together um, for this year even. You know, you can get something, some simple things quickly, food related, music related. Um, and I know the Humanities Council, Council, the Nebraska Humanities Council that Willa mentioned at the ending there was, is there's a lot of different speakers, so there'd definitely be something I would recommend um, taking a look at um, and contacting them for this. They could definitely help you out. Um, so that will wrap it up for today. Um, oh, Willa and, and, and Naomi and Shell, we've got a few more thank yous coming in. Thanks for the great ideas. <laughs> Um, so thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for presenting, everyone. Catherine, who I believe is Sally, uh, Naomi, and Willa. Um, we'll hope you'll look at those resources. Um, and also I hope you will join us next week when our, um, actually Sally will be back. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes. Uh, next week's Encompass Live is uh, Dig Into Reading, the Summer Reading Program 2013. Um, if you want to give a preview of what you'll <laughs> you have I'll planned. be talking about books from preschool age through young adults. So the young adult theme is Beneath the Surface. Mm. And I'm not talking about the adult theme, but that is groundbreaking reads, just in case you wanted to know. Yes, if you want to expand into that. And I like that they do the adults thing now, too, for the summer reading program. It doesn't have to be just the younger people. Everyone should be reading. That's right. I need to read more. All year round. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you'll join us next week for um, that uh, Encompass Live with Sally again. And uh, Encompass Live is on Facebook, as you can see here. So if you are a Facebook user, I hope you will join us there. Um, we do put announcements up here when a new sh um, episode is coming up, when the recordings are ready. So you can um, keep track of what we're doing here um, via Facebook if you do um, use that. You can see here I announced when this morning's was coming up. Join us right now. <laughs> so. Here. Other than that, we are wrapped up for this morning. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.